Okay, uh, here's the problem. The driver accelerates a 240 kilogram snowmobile, which results in a force being exerted that speeds the snowmobile up from six to 28 meters per second. 28 meters per second is really fast. I'm not sure you can make a snowmobile go that fast, but in 60 seconds. So find the change in momentum uh, of the snowmobile. What was the impulse on the snowmobile? And what was the average net force on the snowmobile to get do that? So start uh, with given. Uh, so we've got a snowmobile. So here's my snowmobile. Mm, OK. And so it's got the front skis on it. Look at that. And you got, got here's the steering thing, and here's some guy sitting on it. Look at that. Not a bad drawing, if I do say so, huh? Here's this. He's got a scarf on. Okay. Here's the treads. All right. So um, here's my snowmobile, and its initial velocity is six meters per second. You know, to the right. And its final velocity, I'm not going to draw it again, is 28 meters per second. And the delta t, to go from there to there, was 60 seconds. And of course, the mass of the snowmobile, and I, I, this mass probably includes the mass of the person, I would assume, is uh, 240 kilograms. Okay. And uh, what we want to find, am I on screen there? Yeah, I'm OK. Um, so what I want to find is A, the change in momentum, B, the impulse, which I'll just call force times time. Um, there are, there are uh, people who, who call it I, you know, capital I, impulse. So you can use I if you want. And then uh, part C, uh, the average net force acting on the snowmobile. Okay, so uh, let's solve it. And um, so to find the change in momentum, so for A, the change in momentum is equal to the mass times the change in velocity, right? Mass times change in velocity is a change in momentum. And so the mass times the final minus the initial uh, Velocity. Well, we know all these things. They're given. And so our change in momentum is equal to the mass, which is 240 kilograms, times the final velocity, which is 28 meters per second, minus the initial velocity, which is 6 meters per second. And so my change in momentum is equal to, where's my calculator? Okay, well, what's uh, 28 minus 6 is 22. So I'll just go 22 meters per second times 240 kilograms. And you get 5,280. And what are the units? Kilogram meters per second. Is that what? Whoops. Uh, kilogram meters per second. And that's my answer for part A. All agree with that? Okay. So for part B, and uh, this is for Shir Khan over here, force times time is equal to the change in momentum of an object. That's the impulse momentum theorem. So uh, we figured out what the change in momentum is. And now we want to find the impulse. Well, it's the same thing. Could you look it up? Yeah. Um, it is. Now, 5,280. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. If you didn't do this, I'm not going to mark it wrong. You know, don't, don't take any points off. But when you change from change in momentum to impulse, here's what I like to do. What is impulse? It's force times time. And what are the units for force times time? Newtons times seconds. So when I change it to from a change in momentum, what is momentum? It's mass times velocity. So I call it kilograms times meters per second. 
But when I talk about uh, impulse, I like to write it as Newton's time seconds. Um, why? Because it just feels better to me. If you wrote this with kilogram meters per second, you're fine. Okay. Now for part C, I'm going to move over a little bit. We want the net force. So we know that the net force times time is equal to 5,280 newton seconds. So all I have to do is divide that by the time. So the force is equal to 5,280 newton seconds divided by how much time? 60 seconds. And notice the seconds cancel, leaving newtons. And so the average net force on the snowmobile is 5,280 divided by 60. And I get 88. Is that right? Yeah. 88 newtons. And there's my answer. Okay, let me back out and show the whole thing here. And that is how you solve this problem. Any questions? I'll tell you how to score it in a minute.